As the voice to parliament momentum slows, with a yes vote consistently declining in the polls, a compromise could soon be made to ensure the referendum passes. Peter Dutton spoke today on the legislation introducing the referendum on an Indigenous voice to parliament. When we sing the second line of our national anthem, for we are one and free, instead of being one, we will be divided. The Liberal Party supports constitutional recognition but we do not support enshrining in our constitution a divisive, disrupting and democracy-altering Canberra-based voice. There's been no constitutional convention quite deliberately. Instead, we've had a four-and-a-half-day committee, a kangaroo court led by a government that never wanted to entertain changes to its proposed bill. Liberal MP Julian Lisa has been campaigning for amendments to the proposed wording to garner more support. And it seems the Greens and Independent Senator David Pocock are finally listening. Julian Lisa joins me now. Uh, welcome to the show. Uh, Julian, what are your proposed compromises? What wording do you think needs to change to get more bipartisan support on this? Well, Shari, as you point out, the uh, the referendum is not where it should be if it's going to succeed. The polls have shown it's declining. And there are a couple of things that I think are causing people who want to vote yes not to vote yes. And that's the wording around uh, executive government, that second clause, which has been the flashpoint of a lot of the debate. Um, I want to be clear, I, I will be voting yes regardless. I support the voice and I think the voice should be able to advise executive government. But that doesn't need to go into the constitution to make it so. That, like every other matter to do, to deal with the, to do with the voice, can be left to parliament to determine. And I think if we remove that clause and if we remove uh, the symbolic clause at the beginning of the provision, uh, we are putting the referendum on the best chance uh, to success. I mean, you hear the strength of Peter Dutton's comments in Parliament today. Do you think that at this stage in the process that any changes to the wording uh, will get the coalition back um, supporting the voice to Parliament? Well, the referendum is not about we parliamentarians. The referendum is about all Australians because all of us get a vote on one Saturday in the, in the coming months. And so this is really about focusing on the Australians who'd be inclined to support this but have doubts. I think a better referendum campaign for the yes case to run is one where there are not disputes about the wording of the Constitution. A referendum campaign where you've got the views of competing lawyers and competing mm. judges uh, makes the campaign more difficult. So but, my but on words the question are really of, designed to simplify all of this. But on the question of your party, and, and of course you uh, resigned from your position as Shadow Attorney General because of the position that the Coalition mm. was taking, uh, do you think the changes could bring Peter Dutton and the Coalition back to the table, though? Well, look, I think uh, my colleagues have largely made their decision uh, to vote no to this. There are some colleagues who have made it clear that, that they would be uh, willing to support mm. uh, a, a modified model, people like my colleague Aaron Violi from Victoria. But in the main, they've made the decision. But as I say, it's not about the colleagues because uh, this ultimately is a decision that Australians will be voting on. Most of the time, we as yeah. Australians don't vote on individual laws, but the framers of the Constitution left this question to us. And I mean, so this said... is really about those voters in community that, uh, uh, that, that, are, that have doubts. It's about alleviating those doubts mm. and simplifying the question. I mean, you, you indicated at the start of our interview that you were worried about how the referendum is going at the moment in the polls. Do you think that if changes aren't made, it is on track to fail? Look, I don't think it's on track to, uh, to, to get the sort of handsome yes vote result that I want to see it get. Uh, obviously, there will be a campaign that will uh, commence effectively when the parliamentary process is over in June and things can change in the campaign and I'll be out there campaigning for this. But I think it makes it easier to encourage more people to vote for this uh, if you have, um, you know, if you've removed those obstacles to get to getting soft no voters to become strong yes voters. Mm. Now, one of the strongest voice campaigners, prominent Indigenous leader Noel Pearson, wrote a very controversial piece in the weekend. Um, Australian, uh, and he said the referendum will test us. But he also called readers of the Australian newspaper and people who disagreed uh, with, you know, the voice to Parliament. He said they were bordering casual racists in their views. Um, do you think the voice campaign, and this is, as I said, a prominent Indigenous leader, you know, calling readers casual racists, do you think the voice campaign is becoming overly emotional, less rational? 
Look, I've said right from the start of this debate, it's important that we remember we're all Australians and that it's important that people who are advocates for the voice hear the reasonable concerns of those people who doubt. Just as it is important that people who are opponents of the voice hear the concerns of Indigenous Australians and others that think that this could make a difference. Mm. I think we need to have a civil and respectful debate uh, and that's certainly the way I'm conducting myself and I hope other Australians will be conducting themselves too. Well, Stan Grant has also uh, said that tonight's Q&A will be his final one for some time. He said he's been subject to racism uh, partly because of this debate, also, of course, partly because of uh, that Coronation Night panel where you were a panellist alongside him. Um, what do you think of his comments? Uh, do you think... Perhaps ABC directors, this is a programming mistake, that they shouldn't have had that sort of panel on the coronation night and, and that, that has caused this backlash. Look, I'm happy to go on any television program and defend our wonderful system of constitutional monarchy as I did that night. But I think the program panel was a little unbalanced. I mean, I think there was uh, effectively four people arguing um, against the system that we have and I was the only person arguing uh, in favour of the system that we have. And that doesn't make for a fair and balanced panel because, you know, it means effectively you get, you know, a, a quarter or a fifth of the time to one side and all the rest to the other. And, and that's not, uh, not balanced. But I said that night, mm. because I started to see some of the online hatred that Stan was facing, uh, that while I disagree with Stan's views on this, I absolutely deplore the racism that he has had to, had to face as a result, not just of that panel, but over a long period of time uh, as, a, as a public figure, as a prominent Indigenous public figure. I don't think there's any, any space for that sort of conduct in our country. And I'm sad that Stan is leaving Q&A. I think he's been a, a reasonably good, uh, good compere and I hope he comes back.